Okay, it's the last lecture piece, uh, last main topic uh, for this week, rational inequalities. So already this week we've talked about rational functions, right, and how to graph them, how to understand them in terms of asymptotes and intercepts. So now let's talk about solving rational inequalities. Okay, solving a rational inequality. Step one, solve the rational equation for x. All right, and you'll see me do this. Step two, determine the values that will cause the denominator of the rational expression to equal zero. All right, in other words, take the denominator, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. Use the values from step one and two to determine the intervals of the number line to consider. And then step three, use a test value from each interval to determine which intervals form the solution set, just like we did with quadratic inequalities. All right, so here's our first example. Five over x plus four greater than or equal to one. All right, step one, we want to solve the equation. All right, well, how am I gonna do this? All right, I'm gonna multiply both sides by x plus four, all right? Now, some of you I refer to this as cross multiply, but I'm multiplying both sides by x plus four, so they cancel on the left, all right? This leaves me five equals x plus four, and I need to solve this for x, and I get x equals one, all right? So x equals one I get from solving the rational equation, all right? This is the intercept for the, the x-intercept for the rational function. All right, now uh, what we want to do is take our denominator and set it equal to zero. So just take plain old x plus four, set it equal to zero, and we get x equals negative four. This is where we're going to have a uh, vertical asymptote, as we know from early on, uh, well, from the first part of this week's lecture. All right, so we cannot plug in negative four. All right, so again, the rational function has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative four. All right, so now let's look at uh, the intervals. All right, so we got negative four and one. All right, and notice, guys, that I am not consistently using parentheses and brackets. I have parentheses with the negative four, but I have a bracket with the one. Why in the world would that be? Well, it's because negative 4 is our restriction. Negative 4 is what we cannot plug in for x. And so the number that you get from the denominator, you will always use parentheses around. Okay, because we can't get there. We can't plug it in. All right, so negative 4 gets parentheses. We know at this point infinities always get parentheses. And that leaves 1. Do I want parentheses or bracket with the one? And for the one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my inequality. Since I have greater than or equal to, all right, I can actually put a bracket around the one. Had it been just a strict inequality, then I would have used parentheses. Okay, so for the number that the boundary point that does not come from the denominator, that comes from solving, you need to look at your inequality. All right, let's get back to actually solving this. T negative five is clearly in my interval, all right? Zero is clearly in my second interval, and two is in my third interval, all right? So the first question, I plug in negative five, all right? Is, is what I'm getting here greater than or equal to one? Well, if I simplify, I get negative five. I get five over negative one, which is negative five, and negative five is not greater than or equal to one. All right, so that first interval is false. All right, now let's plug in zero, and we get, are gonna get five over four. Well, five fourths is greater than or equal to one. Okay, so the middle interval is true. And now I'm gonna plug in two, and I get five over six, and five sixths is not greater than or equal to one. And so that last interval is going to be false. So only the middle interval is true here, all right? And so our answer is gonna be parentheses on the negative four to one bracket, all right? And I give you a little bit more of an explanation down here uh, so you have it in your notes as to why parentheses versus brackets. All right, let's look at the graph. Does the graph confirm our answer? 
All right, we'll notice we have our vertical asymptote at negative four, the number we found from setting the denominator equal to zero. We have our x-intercept at one. Okay, now just notice the tick marks aren't necessarily standard or not every tick marks a one. So we are crossing the x-axis at one. All right, and so what did we do? We had, we tested this interval, negative infinity to negative four parentheses. All right, we plugged in negative five. Are we bigger than one? No, we weren't, we're down here. All right, then we looked at negative four to bracket one. All right, and we plugged in zero and we got a number that in fact was greater than or equal to one. And then similarly, on this last interval over here, we tested it, and again, we did not get a true statement or a true inequality. All right, and so again, here in the shaded region is where we're getting our true statement, and that is between parentheses negative four, bracket one. So the graph does confirm our answer.